Okay, apparently does not like me pressing F9. <laughs> Don't press F9 in the game. Noted. Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to this game of Slipways, the developer of this, uh, just one guy working on their own using uh, various assets and things, uh, reached out to me and said this might be a game you'd be interested in. I do receive like hundreds of these a day, but this one definitely caught my eye. Uh, it seemed to be pretty complete. It looked good. Like the graphics in this genuinely good. And it was very much of a premise that I quite like. Basically, you take over planets, those planets start producing resources, you export those resources to other planets, and you start making money, science, and that type of thing. We will very quickly go through the learn to play, it doesn't take very long, and then we will start a new game. I should note, in fact, I'm going to move my head up very slightly because he asked me to make it very clear that this is beta. This game is not yet out. This is just kind of a first look type thing. So I'll put my head above the beta version yeah, thingy, and F8 is the bug report, okay. Then the other thing I was asked to highlight, as soon as I find the email, there it is. Um, this will be available on February the 3rd, so we've still got another two weeks or so, in which time he wants to tighten up the, um, the game itself. No, let's go with 50, let's turn the music down. Music is good, I like it, but we'll, we'll try that. Okay, so we're going to do Learn to Play. This is basically just a series of pop-ups which says these are the things you do. And then we'll try. Did I say this was made by one guy? Yeah. <laughs> which is really impressive. Look around by dragging the right mouse button or using WASD. Zoom in and out by scrolling or using Q&E. You start each game by sending out probes. Click and drag on an empty space to launch one. The dark orbs are subspace signals. The bigger the signal, the bigger chance of finding a planet. These things. Okay, I got you. Drag between colonized planets to connect them with a slipway. If you connect a planet that makes a resource, that resource to a planet that needs that resource, they will trade. So this one produces grain, this one needs grain. You click and drag from the grain to the non-grain and boom, they're now trading. You see the little uh, spacecraft going between them. Slipways cannot cross. So make sure you plan accordingly. They also have limited range and can't be too close to planets or other obstructions. When things don't work out, you can undo most actions. The only exception is actions revealing new information like sending probes. To undo, use the button as shown above or use the U button. Once you make a few connections, you'll want to find more planets. Probes can be launched from any colonized planet. You can also build your own structures. To do this, go to the Build tab and drag the structure anywhere on the map. There are many kinds, but only the lab is available from the start. Research runs on science, which you get by building labs. Labs need researchers and a resource to study. Adding more researchers, the same resource increases output. Do these actually do something? Oh, they do. Whoops. I haven't gone through any of those. Uh, before each game, you pick up a council. In fact, let's do this just to see if I missed anything important. Click on the planets to colonize them. Yeah, that would have been useful. Uh, most planet types offer several industries to choose from. Choice determines the planet that needs the products. See, I thought that these arrow keys would just go between these because it looks like it's just one screen. Click and drag between to make them connect. It does go between them. <laughs> okay. That's a little confusing. Um, might want to have like a one of two or however many screens there are within these categories. Otherwise, I suspect that players will do what I just did. Small clarification, a demo will be dropping on the 3rd of February. Gotcha, during the Steam Game Festival. Thank you. And Krajeg is the one guy. Good to have you in chat. Yeah, when like individual developers come up with systems like this, it is really, really impressive. Like I worked in a very small indie company, there were two of us. And this is beyond what we ever managed. Admittedly, he was the programmer and the artist, I was just the writer. He had a hell of a lot more to do than I did. Labels under planet show the status of each need and product. The need is, uh, if the need is already supplied, a dimmed one still has to be delivered. Okay, so you've got grain already, but you still want the green, whatever the green is. A lit product is available for shipping, a dimmed one is already shipped somewhere. 
I see. So you produce three grain. One grain is already gone. Okay. Planet starts production right after the colonize, but they'll be stuck at struggling the lowest planet level to upgrade a plant to establish, deliver all of its needs. Upgrading planets increases the production income and happiness. There are higher levels, of course. Plants become successful once they get two imports and two exports. They become prosperous once they have three successful trade partners and six total imports and exports. Planets often need to develop extra needs when they upgrade. You need to satisfy those as well before the planet upgrades again. Okay. Struggling planets hurt your empire a lot. When colonizing, try to plan how to get new planets to establish as soon as possible. It helps with a stable loop of planets supplying each other. Planets accept any amount of needed resource. If two comparable planets are connected, resources flow both ways. Okay. So these are supplying each other. When you want to know more about a planet, click on it to enter its detail view. This will show you upgrade conditions and other relevant information. Click away to zoom out or exit the view. Slipways, we saw that one. If you hold Alt while hovering over a planet, you'll see the potential trade routes. Ah, okay. That's good to know. When things don't work out, you can undo. Exploration. When you view the sector of a limited range by a number of your sensors, colonizing new planets extends your view. Okay, so this fog of war is actually not the edge of the map. It's just un uh, uncensored yet. In addition to planets, you'll find other objects and structures. Hovering over them will show you how they work. Structures, like planets, most structures level up, but the conditions for upgrade are different for each kind. You can click structures to get more detailed information. Research runs on science, which you get by building labs. Labs need researchers and a resource to study. Adding more researchers or more of the same resource increases output. You can spend your technology on the tech tab. Okay, this I missed. In the beginning, you get access to the first level of technologies. As you invest in tech, your tech level rises. This means you access more powerful techs, but you'll lose access to the lower level ones. Labs need a lot of upkeep, so you really want to keep them delivering three science or more. This can be tricky, so keep out an eye out for places that can easily get two or more of the same resource and plan on using those spots for labs. Oh, so it has to be the same resource. Okay. Before each game, pick a council of three alien races. Starting with the second year, you'll be asked to perform missions for the council. You have to pick two, unless the end of your turn is near, in which case you can decline. After you finish a set of missions, you'll be offered new, more difficult ones. Time only advances when you take an action. Most actions take between one and three months. So it's a month to send a probe. You only get income at the end of every year. Trade routes are your main source of income. Higher level planets earn more money per trade. If you run out of money before the year ends, you can skip years manually. Which is what I guess the buttons mean. Your term as governor lasts 25 years. At the end of it, you'll be scored on the prosperity of your planets, the esteem gained by completing missions, and the size of your empire. You can see the details in the scoring tab. Score is also multiplied by overall happiness in the sector. This is mostly based on the level of your planets. Struggling planets grow more unhappy each year. Successful and prosperous planets increase, happi un uh, increase happiness. Planets also dislike having idle population or are being unable to support... Uh, being unable to export any of their products. Hover over a planet to see the total influence on happiness and click to get more detail. Oh, what's the effect of unhappiness? Oh, your score. Unlike money and science, happiness doesn't accumulate each year. The total happiness is the sum of the modifiers on your plants and structures. Keep an eye on this total. You can be thrown out of office if it gets too low. Having many struggling planets makes it hard to maintain your happiness. Try to avoid overextending and colonize carefully. Scouting ahead and prioritizing planets you can supply. That's it. Time to start building your own glorious empire. Good luck. 
Alright. Let's pour myself some tea, and then we'll try this. Yeah, some interesting concepts, definitely. Alright, so again, this is just the beta version. There will be more setting or more um, scenarios and game types when the game is actually out. Um, but this is just the beta for the demo. I want to make sure I get that right now. So we're going to do a standard run, just you, undeveloped space, and 25 years to make a thriving society. We'll play this on reasonable. Okay, so, select your council. So we have three different races that we can pick, and it's a combination of these five. So we've got the Bakar, strong believers in the bounty of the universe, so long as they're uh, being there specifically so sentient races can benefit from it. Quick to anger, but also honourable. They value truthfulness and a straightforward approach. They focus on mining energy and brute force. The Vittori. Focused on self-improvement, their main goal is to transcend any and all limits of life. Rational to a fault, their society leaves no space for weakness. Every action an individual takes should be a step on the path to perfection. So that is science, knowledge, and transcendence. The Aphorians, the deal brokers of the galaxy. Their core belief is that increasing wealth increases happiness for everyone. Originally an aquatic amoeba-like species, they utilize high-tech environment suits to travel and communicate with others. Hmm, I think I might pick them. The Dender. Friends to all life, they focus on spreading sentience through the universe, adapting to uh, its to life's needs in the process. Long-lived, genderless, and calm, they have paternal disposition towards shorter-lived, more emotional races. And then the Sylphid, an insectile race whose members share a telepathic link. They value growth and domination through industrial power. Their society is hierarchical and homogenous, maximizing efficiency but sacrificing individual individuality in the process. So I'm thinking we'll probably go Vittori and then Sylphid. Okay, so these are the perks. Then do we pick two of these or do we always get those? No, we pick two of them from the whole list. So well prepared. Get an additional 40 credits at the start of the scenario. Unlocks artifact trading on remnant planets. So this is population into, I guess, artifacts. Grants an additional 5 science at the start of the scenario. Gain access to additional level 2 technologies, one per race. Factory builders. Reduces forge world colonization time by a month. Reduces structure building cost by 30%. So actually if I deselect you I can see what the others do. Power grid. Planets receiving power have production increased by a unit and earn 30% more income. Okay, that actually sounds maybe more useful. 15% of enemy signal... Ener 15% of empty signals become asteroids. Increase the value of exploited asteroids by 30. Actually, these guys are really good. Huzzah! And then these planets producing population or food pay no upkeep. When you upgrade a planet to prosperous, you receive two extra science. <laughs> like he's wearing like a Greek toga. Um, hmm... I'm thinking of these three. I think that's going to be the good way to do this. Sindrin! Thank you very much for the bits. I cannot get on board with colonizing Venus. I don't work well under pressure, nor do I like toxic work environments. Touché. Interesting seeing new games. Hey, Horned Panda, thank you very much for the 38 month resubscription. That's crazy. 38 months. And Arachnos coming in with a 9 month resubscription. I'm back! Finally, I feel like I can relax a little. That is good to hear. It is good to relax. Ah, I'm still very much waking up, so... I apologise if I'm looking a little sleepy. I try to go for a walk in the mornings if I can. The problem is... Mornings for me are like... 6 o'clock in the morning. Before I go to bed. And that always cuts into... When I actually want to go to bed. Okay, so here we go. Three races. This looks good. Oh, we need to choose the perks, don't we? Uh, well, I definitely want the production increase. And I'm actually really tempted to go for the extra 
Asteroids. Oh, you can only have one per race. Interesting. Okay, that's a slightly more difficult proposition in that case. I'm going to go with the Prospectors. I'm, I'm going to go with my Stellaris gut feeling here. And then I think I'm going to do the Artifact Trading on Remnant Planets. It's just good business after all. Thought you lived in England. I do, but I stream on American time pretty much, which is why I start at 5pm and I finish at 2am. And just like most people, I like having an evening. I did used to try, like, getting up at 1 or 2, streaming, and then going to bed at, like, 4. But the problem with that is you have, like, 2 hours before the stream and 2 hours after the stream. It's not enough time to actually do anything. So instead I get up just before the stream, as if you were getting up just before work, and then I actually have like four hours, five hours after streaming to do stuff, like play other games. How come you stream on American time? Bigger audience. I try to cover both, which is 5pm, which is when most Brits and Europeans get home from work, until 2am, which is when most Americans are thinking, well, what's that? That's 9pm in the US, Eastern. And Pacific people, I'm sorry, <laughs> your time zone's too mad. Welcome! Since this is your first game, you should probably check out how to play videos by clicking the highlighted button. Watch only as much as you need. You can always return to them later when you have questions. I already did. So we're going to click and drag, which gives us the asteroid view, and we can go on there. So three planets and asteroid. We'll put one there. Three planets and an asteroid. And one over there. So one of them was false, there was nothing there. So a forge world, asteroid. And actually just hovering over the asteroid shows the links. And pressing alt. Works for that, but not for that. So lava planets apparently do nothing. Well, we definitely want to get Stevenson. So let's go ahead and click on you and say we want to turn you into... Oh, there are different types. So this is an ocean world. So we can have a colony world, which uses food and something produces population. Algae farm, which uses water. No, something. And produces food. Or water export, which uses population and exports water. Well, I don't think an algae farm is going to be very useful. Uh, what about you? Earth-like. You have a hive world, so you use food and you produce population. Agro world uses the thing and then produces food. Or a Gaia world which uses population and then produces green and water. So, so far we haven't seen anything that actually uses water. Then we've got the forge world. Oh, yeah, there we go. Which is nanotech, which uses, I guess, minerals for components. Oh, those are robots. Okay. So minerals into robots, minerals into goods, and then robots into goods. And we have a mineral producing place here. So we need to get the minerals from that to there. Which I don't think we're going to get done anytime soon. I think I'm going to send out another probe over here. To see what these are. So we have a remnant, which is population, lots and lots of population. Population to minerals, population to electronics, population to robots, or population into goods. Here we have green and food into population, green and bots into food, or bots into water. Well, we can get food from here with the agro world. We can get water or population from here. And in fact, if we do population here, we can feed the production need from this. So I think that's going to be a colony. Oh, we need to colonize that. So you would be an agro world. You can then provide food to you. 
This needs to be bots. Bots goes to, sorry, minerals goes to there. Population goes to there, which is done automatically. So this place is now established. Successful. No, it's established. It doesn't actually, yes, it does there. You should also be established. You are struggling. So we need to get bots to you. Which would be a connection from here. Now you have minerals. Can I export those minerals? No. Okay, so we need to get minerals from somewhere else. Uh, we can exploit the asteroid for wealth. Yields eight money for every nearby colonized planet. Okay, so we probably want to do that once we've actually colonized everything. Well, let's go and ping here. Where we've got a jungle world, which is using electronics and food for population, bots for food, or bots for water and green. A swamp world, which is electronics and grain for population. Bots for food, or population for double green. Is that Soylent Green by any chance? <laughs> I have a bad feeling that Soylent Green. Desert World can't do anything. Oh, and then we whoops. also have this one, which is bacteria breeding, which is population into green, population into water, or green into food. I mean, we have green here, so we could have these two actually trading with each other. If you went for breeding program. Soylent Green is people. Well, there is a Soylent tech. Okay, so it, it totally is. Uh, right, what did the population need? Sorry, what did we need for labs? Make science when provided with resource to study. So that's either minerals, water, green, components, or bots and researchers, which is people. So we're getting quite a lot of people from Stevenson 1. Oh, you know what? I think you can use labs as a no, you can't use it as a connection. I think that putting like the research lab like here. Oops. Might work. So we want whoops. Um, people from you. And then I guess... Oh no, that's gonna block that passage. And do the breeding program here, which is you. And now we're gonna want to source a population for this. I mean, actually, we could do bacteria bleeding, which is... Oh no, that's the wrong way around. Do monoculture. This one can produce... Oh, hang on. We could do money culture here. And then population here. So, you produce... Oh. oh, I'm out of money. Brilliant. Okay, well, we better go ahead and exploit this. Which gets us the money. So we've got the people going to that. We've got people going to that. And then we have a crazy amount of soil and green coming out of this. Um, we still don't have minerals for you. And we still don't have a source of bots in this area. And we are now producing science. So how much science do we have? One. So we can't get any of these yet. Deep drilling would be the... Closest. So mine's produced an additional production. So is that what this is? Yes, this is a mine. So we would get additional minerals from that. That's a primordial world. That doesn't help me right now. You're right, I did want that. You can undo them, thankfully. So...
Yeah, there we go. We're back. So it was... Green into food. And then... Connect... Those two. Then we wanted to exploit that for the... Uh, no, don't do that. That's too early. New missions available. Increase total production of production of, um, yeah, goods by two units. Establish a water lab to get to science or colonize three more planets. I mean, we'll definitely do the colonization. And probably the water for science. Water seems, I mean, we get water from you. I wonder how long I have to do them. And if we get two more planets, then we're going to be big. Hey, you go. Galenus, I'd love to see Galactic Civ 3 played at some point on the channel. Lots of amazing mods for it. Yeah, Gal Civ 3 is something which I've had my eye on for a while. Oops, don't do that. Um, hmm. Because I kind of want to colonize this, I think. Okay, that does skip a whole year. Fine. This was going to be a colony to produce people, so we can actually... You. Damn it. Okay, now I can do this, though. Because these two are not colonizable, so we can do that. We can exploit this for the money. We can have you connecting. We can have you connecting. You're already getting people from there. I need a source of minerals. I guess we'll go and do some exploration. So, another ocean world, which uses minerals. Although, hmm, no. Yeah, this algae farm uses bots. I feel like we can probably use those bots better, though. Or a thawing facility which uses bots for water. I mean, bots for water? We could put a lab, like right here. A water lab. Which is incredibly expensive. <laughs> um... So population goes to you, and then we'll need to colonize one of these for water. Yeah, colonizing that planet was a mistake, and probably that one too, because we can't go across that. I'm going to turn the music up a bit. Can't hear it now. There we go. Um, I guess we'll go back into another month. That's the happiness. So resource shortages, yeah, they're costing us because we have a few. And also our income is super low. You know, I think I'm going to start this again. We'll try again because I think I had a bad start. So we're going to use the same people. So it was you, it was you, and it was you. We were going to go with the... Miners? These are different. They've actually changed the, uh, the perks. Okay, that's interesting. Yours are the same. Every time two-way trades between the new power plants is established, you receive eight money. See, that sounds amazing. Oh no, that's two-way trade. No, that's actually quite hard to do. Planets receiving goods earn 25% more income. Planets receiving pro power have production. I didn't actually even see how to make power. When you deliver minerals, gain money. Minerals for money sounds marvelous. <laughs> 